Minister Joshua Jenkins is a teacher, preacher, and business owner. He's the eldest son of Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. and First Lady Trina Jenkins. He was licensed as a minister at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where he also serves as a young adult pastor as well as the drama ministry director. He's a graduate of Boy State University with a bachelor's degree in mass communications with a concentration in broadcast journalism and a minor in theater. Minister Joshua Jenkins has also been making his wave as a playwright, filmmaker, and director for the last 20 years. Minister Josh and his brother Jimmy Jenkins filmed their first budgeted feature film entitled Sinners Wanted, which debuted in theaters in spring of 2019 and on the TV One Network in 2020. It is currently available on a variety of streaming platforms. Minister Josh is also the co-writer, co-director, and co-producer alongside Anthony Brown of the Christmas production Some Way, Some how, which has been viewed by thousands over the past 12 years. His greatest joy is being the husband to Danielle and the father to three sons. First Baptist, let's welcome Minister Joshua Jenkins. Praise the Lord. That's, thank you, thank you. Uh, but can we give God a better praise than that? Can we give glory to God in this place? It's the last day of the year, and I don't know about you, but everybody ain't here right now. But I thank God that he made it. He gave me, he allowed me, he gave me the privilege to make it another year. And if you're grateful in this place, I double dare you to give God the best praise, the best thank you. I don't deserve it, but Lord, I'm here and I'm grateful. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. You didn't do nothing to keep you, but he kept you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, so, you know, I'm not a... I work here. <laughs> uh, I've been going here for the past 30 years of my life, uh, and over 30 years of my life, and I'm, I'm grateful to be here this morning. Um, I want it's Young Adult Sunday. So if you're a young adult, or if you adult and you feel young, can you make some noise in this place? We, uh, I, I get the honor and the privilege to serve, uh, I believe, the best young adult ministry there is. ID, y'all know who y'all are that serve with, within the ministry or come. Um, I want to recognize, of course, uh, I'm the young adult pastor, but this church has one pastor, and his name is John K. Jenkins Sr. Uh, and... Uh, he is not just my pastor, but he's my dad. And he's y'all's pastor, but I had him first. And uh, I've had him my whole life. I love him, he's my hero. Uh, he, he means more to me than words can express. I love him, because he's been there for me, he's covered me, he's kept me, he's protected me, he's loved on me, he's led me, he's poured into me. And I, 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 I probably will never get to amount to everything that he is, but Lord knows I'm going to try. Every day, I, every day I wake up, I just try to be just like God and like you. And I love you, Dad. Thank you so much for being the greatest dad that there is. And uh, my mom is downstairs on grandma duty. Uh, can y'all make some noise for the greatest, for the praying woman, uh, the intercessor, uh, the first lady, Trina Jenkins. I love you, Mom. She's our CMO, our chief ministry officer. Uh, she's my boss as well. My dad, both my parents are my bosses. Uh, and I thank God for the privilege to work for my parents and serve in here. Uh, to our leadership, to the elders, I love you. I thank God for you. Uh, and I'm honored to be here this morning. Amen. Uh, if you will, turn, to your, turn your Bibles with me uh, to Acts, the 16th chapter. And um, I'm going to start a reading at the 22nd verse, and I'm going to go to the 31st verse. That's Acts 16, verse 22. Say amen when you get there. Amen. 
and it reads, then the, multitude then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Verse 25 says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved you and your household. The word of the Lord is blessed. Could you turn to your neighbor and tell them the way out? Say the way out. Turn to the other side and say the way out. Pray with me. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. I pray, oh heavenly father, that you will be with me. Use me. Allow somebody in here or somebody watching online to receive your message today. Let me say what I need to say and let me not say what I don't need to say. Let thy will be done in this place so that somebody will get saved. It's not for me, but so that you will get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. I didn't get a chance, she was, she was walking the kids downstairs, but my wife of seven years just came back inside the sanctuary. And I just want to say, uh, her name is Danielle. She's the best thing that ever happened to me besides Christ. And uh, I love you. Uh, thank you for being married to my crazy self for seven years. Uh, and you can't get away from me because I'm going wherever you go. Uh, and uh, for the record, we are married, but we're not just married, we're happily married. Uh, let the record reflect. Uh, we enjoy each other. I like being around her, and I believe she likes being around me. And if she doesn't, she does a good job of faking it till she makes it. I love you, baby. Amen. Today is uh, the, the last day of the year, and um, uh, tonight, uh, at midnight, the clock will strike 12, and many of us are waiting, are waiting that. Um, we are waiting that we have our New Year's resolutions. We have posted Instagram posts uh, of things that we are committing to for the year of 2024 uh, because we are done with 2023. Uh, and so um, we are ready. We are awaiting that time. Um, but today, uh, I would like to challenge, this is not, let me just say this, this is not um, a message uh, that uh, I am going to declare to you that everything is going to be A-OK -okay in 2024. So you can throw that out of your mind today. Um, what I come to do is to challenge you today uh, for 2024 so that God can get everything he needs out of you and do everything he needs to do for you in 2024. But before we go into 2024, we must first deal with 2023. And uh, many of us, every year, uh, we make goals and we make uh, reservations and resolutions uh, to be different in 2024. But the truth 
uh, of the matter is many of us are the same person uh, that we were in 2022, and many of us are figured f about to go into 2024 the same way we are in 2023. Uh, when the clock strikes midnight, the same bank account is still going to be there. Uh, the same spouse is still going to be there. Your children are still going to be there. Your job uh, is still, that same annoying manager is still going to be there. There. And so what I would like to challenge you to do today is get out God's way. Somebody say the way out. Uh, in this text, in the 16th chapter of this text, we find Paul and Silas and the crew. Uh, they have been going around doing ministry in Philippi. Philippi is a Roman colony in Macedonia. And Paul and Silas uh, and Luke uh, were going around planting churches and doing ministry, and while they were doing so, uh, in, came encounter, in, uh, encountered a young woman who was possessed. Uh, go back and read this when you have time for y'all who don't know the story. Some of y'all do know the story, but if you don't, go back and read uh, uh, Acts 16. Uh, and they were going around doing ministry. They encountered a, a woman who was possessed with a spirit of divination. She was possessed, and she... The Bible says that she made her masters much money by fortune telling. And so she encounters Paul and the crew while they are on their way to prayer day in and day out. Uh, and she begins to declare who Paul and the disciples were. Uh, the Bible says that she did this for many days. And after many days, Paul, this is not my words, he got annoyed. The Bible says he got annoyed with her and uh, he didn't curse her. Watch this, he delivered her. That's good preaching uh, because many of you might be annoyed with some people, uh, but y'all cuss, y'all cuss them, uh, uh, y'all curse them, y'all give them a piece of your mind. But what, what Paul did, he gave, he gave her a piece of his Holy Spirit and he delivered her uh, from the possessed spirit that was upon her. Uh, and so that's not what the message is about. But after he delivered her, her masters got mad. Uh, can I just say this, that the world, is, the world does not get excited what we as believers, as Christians, get excited about. The, their, their ways are not our ways. Uh, somebody being delivered and set free uh, from such spirits is things that we get excited about, but they were not happy because it affected their pockets. And so they took Paul and Silas before the authorities, and they... Pretty, they pretty much accused them of practicing uh, religious practices that were not approved in Rome, uh, that they were doing things that were not uh, a religious standard, that were against what they believed in Rome. And so what the authorities did was where we find ourselves, they had them beaten and thrown in jail, uh, not just in jail or in prison, but the Bible says that the jailer took them to the inner prison because they were to be secured uh, tightly, top security. Uh, and so uh, Paul and Silas are now sitting in the jail cell after being beaten, after being bruised, after being accused of. And many of us in this church or watching online today uh, have been through 2023. Many of us, not all, Many, some, have been doing the work of the Lord, trying to do the right thing, following God, but you still feel that the situation you're in does not reflect the work that you have done for God. And so you find yourselves feeling spiritually imprisoned, feeling beaten, bloody, worn down, and in bondage. And so many of us are trying to get out or figure out ways to get out the wrong way. Uh, we are in danger of leaving 2023 the same way and going into 2024 the same way. And so today I want to give you three things that you can do to help get out. The way out, I would like to uh, pose to you today to learn how to endure and trust God in trying and suffering circumstances. Uh, deliverance comes through Christ. Amen? 
And so I'm going to look at everybody in the text uh, here that, that, uh, uh, that is in this text because we can learn from, from all of them. We can learn from Paul and Silas. We can learn from the prisoners. We can also learn from the jailer. But the first thing I, want, I would pose for you to do uh, to get out or as the way out is what Paul and Silas did in verse 25. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, uh, I want to call that uh, they reverence. That's point one. One dot reverence. Say reverence. Uh, when we get into troubling times, the, mo the first thing that most of us do, especially the young adult community, is uh, we don't reverence God. We reverence everything else. How do I know? Because I can tell most of you what you've been through by your Instagram post. Uh, we post subliminal messages to people. Uh, we, we are talking to one person, but for some reason we think that everybody needs to see what we are uh, uh, feeling about a certain situation. Uh, we per we post that we are we, we set free from stuff that that that, that we ain't set free from. Uh, 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 we reverence Instagram. We, ev we, we reverence other people. We reverence uh, uh, other things. And so in this situation, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. This is what the word prayer means in the text. It means the addressing and petitioning of God and offering up of our desires unto God for things agreeable to his will in the name of Christ, with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Uh, can I help you guys? Uh, some of you go, some of us are in certain situations and we, we, we get tired of praying. Okay, um, uh, uh, and if you wanna get out, if you want to get out of 2023 the right, right, the right way, you got to learn how to reverence God. And one of the ways that we reverence God is to pray. But one thing about our prayers is we must understand that our prayers are not notifi a notification to God. Uh, we are not notifying God of anything. Uh, God knows everything. He is all-knowing. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. He is everywhere at one time. He lives outside of time. He is before. He's in the present, and he's in the future. So our prayers to him is not notification. So when you pray to God, you're not notifying him of anything. You are reverencing him. You are honoring him for who he is. Because what you are saying is, Lord, I know I can't do anything about this, but I know you can. So God, I am praying, I am reverencing you uh, that you will hear me. I know you know what's happening, but God, I submit to you. I'm tired of uh, uh, young adults. I, I was talking to a young adult not long ago. Uh, as a young adult pastor, I counsel young adults all the time. And, 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 and the, the, the person said to me, uh, they said, before you, before you tell me to do anything, just don't tell me to pray. Uh, she, uh, just, just don't tell me to pray because uh, I already know I need to do that. And that's all they say at church is just pray your way through. Uh, can we stop minimizing the power of prayer? The only reason you are here today is because somebody prayed for you. Somebody opened up their mouth and spoke your name when you didn't even know it. Somebody prayed for you. The car didn't hit you, not because it was a coincidence, but somebody opened up their mouth and they prayed for you. They pleaded to God for you. We, we have a habit. We got this thing like, oh, you go into church, all they're going to do is tell you to pray about it. Now, let me say this. I am a, a believer that you got to do more than pray, but, but there is power in prayer. A prayer is a weapon. And if you want to mess with me, let me tell you who can pray. Trina E. Jenkins knows how to pray because there are things that happen in this church when she opened up her mouth. And Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'm here because I had a praying mother. Uh, but, but, but we don't know how to pray. Uh, in, in Matthew 6, 6 5, uh, it says, uh, uh, it says uh, this is how Jesus tells us to pray. He says to go into your room and shut the door 
It says, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. He says, this is what Jesus says, don't use vain repetitions as the heathens do. Okay, y'all say, he gives us, he says, he says, he says, pray like this, our Father in heaven, how will it be your name, your kingdom come? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, y'all praying for your will, but you, you enter your prayer and say, Lord, this is what I want, but thy will be done. Because the problem is, that's why you're in the situation that you're in, because you keep praying for your will, because your will is getting done. But when you pray, when you reverence God, you learn how to submit to the will. <laughs> They were praying. Not only were they praying, they were singing hymns. Uh, Paul and Silas were worshiping in the middle of a suffering circumstance. Uh, now, isn't that odd that they were in, they were, they were wounded, beaten, and confined, and they were not sitting there quietly or, or sleep, but they were singing hymns. Uh, 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 they were worshiping. God. They were singing praises. They were, they were making the jail cell resound with praise and with worship and prayer. Can I tell you something? The way out is through your mouth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, watch this. The Bible says that they were praying and they were singing hymns. And then this is what, hap this is what happens in verse, in verse 26. It says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose see when you reverence God when you pray to God when you worship God he responds and some of you come in here and are a little too quiet you sit you cute and everything but I double dare somebody to learn how to open up your mouth and sing to God a song because if you want God to shake something, if you need an earthquake, if you need to be loose, I double dare somebody to open up your mouth and begin to sing to God a song. Listen, watch this. There was a hymn. Uh, there was a hymn we used to sing uh, when I was growing up. It used to say, I need uh, thee, oh, uh, I need thee. Uh, Every, every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, thy Savior. I come to, to thee. You got to open up your mouth and begin to sing. I don't care if you don't got the note. I don't care how you sound. God knows how you sound. God wants to hear it. And I come today to set off an earthquake. I come so that the gates of hell will not prevail. I come. God responds to our reverence. He responds to our prayer. He responds, responds to, 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 to our worship. Uh, uh, and, and if that, that anthem, if that hymn was a little old for y'all, uh, my brother, uh, our very own Anthony Brown, he has a song. Uh, it's called Speak Your Name. Uh, uh, this, this is the words to the song. It says, when we speak your name, something happens in the room. Our hands go up. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. When we speak your name, power is released. As we bow down before you, every demon has to flee. Before we do anything else, we call on you. I double dare you. Give, forget, can we give God five seconds? I gotta move, I gotta go. The Bible says, the Bible says that not only were they singing prayer and singing, the, the prisoners were listening to them. Criminals were listening to them. And I wanna challenge you, when you reverence God, you gotta know, the Bible says that everyone's chains were loose. You need to look at your neighbor and say, listen, I don't know, what, you may come to sit quiet, but my praise is gonna free you. What I'm about to do gonna free you. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever's on me is going, it's going to rub off on you. You better watch out. 
If you ain't come to get free, you better watch out because you may not want to open your mouth, but if you're going to sit next to me, you fit because my worship and my prayer, it's going to rub off on you. You better watch out. All right. I got to go. I got to keep going. You got to reverence God. You got to reverence God. The second point, the second thing you got to do, uh, the second thing you got to do is uh, Paul and Silas. Listen to this. Paul and Silas and the prisoners on verse 27 and 30, it says, and the keeper of the prison, awakening from his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Let's stop right there. Uh, second thing, one reverence. The second point is to remain. Uh, 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 at least for the young adult community, and maybe, maybe many of us are here, we don't know how to remain. When, when, you, know, you know, oh, Jesus, help me. I mean, not to, to offend anybody, but there's so many people who just, you know, you just leave at the drop of a hat, you know? I mean, the, they get on your nerves at the job, and you just, you just quit, you know? You get married, and then you just, it doesn't work out. You, you just get a divorce. Oh, who cares, right? Uh, uh, but we don't know how to remain. Uh, and and what, what, the, what the Bible says is uh, the jailer woke up, saw the doors open. He had, had assumed. It said supposing his hypothesis of the situation was that the prisoners had fled. And so he knew punishment was coming to him. So he turned the, the knife to kill himself. But can I sound the alarm today? Uh, that there are people who are suffering in here who are looking at their situations and you are ready to give up on life. I decree and declare, don't you do it. I dare, I remain, stay put. If you don't know what to do, just sit there with God. But don't you quit on life. Don't you quit on the marriage. Don't you quit on the opportunity. God has got you there for a reason. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't you do it. Don't you quit. Don't you take matters into your own hands and now allow God to be God. The, the, the jailer thought that his way out was to kill himself. There are many of us. I know I've felt it. I've been there. I felt like killing myself. I felt like I've struggled, I've warred with life. If this is even worth it, I, I, I struggle with depression, y'all. I struggle with it. I, I used to say I suffer with it, but I struggle with it because it's a fight. And I war with it. I war with it. He might get me one day, but the next day I'm more. I war with it. I war with it. I war with it. I war with it. And when I can't shake it, when I can't shake it, I just sit with God and I remain. And I said, I don't care if the storm is roaring against me and it's beating on me. I ain't quitting. I will remain. I will endure. We got to learn how to endure, how to remain. So this is what happens. The jailer tried to take his life. But look, look at what Paul and Silas do. It says, Paul, Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm. We are all here. That means him and Silas and the prisoners. So his behavior, not only did it loose their shackles, it influenced their behavior because they stayed. They remained. See, what, what, let me tell y'all something. Oh, I got to hurry up. I got, I got 10 minutes. Listen, 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 listen. The way out is not in your hand. The way out is not in your hand. Uh, 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 Paul and Silas scream, do yourself no harm. We are all still here. Don't do it. Don't take matters into your own, own hands. And the question I have is why did Paul, Silas, and the prisoners stay? See, many of y'all, y'all take, take the shake up because their, their shackles are loose and doors are open. See, God has shook some of y'all situations and you see an opportunity to flee. Well, 
But Paul and Silas, see, this, this was post-Pentecost. So they had the Holy Spirit. There are many reasons why, why we can assume. The text doesn't necessarily say why they, why, they, why they stayed, but we can assume some things from the text. We can gather some things from the text that if they would have left, they would have been fugitives, right? Uh, or, or maybe they knew the jailer would try to kill himself. Or maybe the Holy Spirit just convicted them and said, don't, kill, don't leave, stay. That's the godly thing to do is to stay. But nonetheless... They're enduring and staying even when they, were, they had the chance to escape, to remain, was affect, would affect the jailer. Because they stayed, he did not kill himself. Can I preach to you real quick? Some of y'all who are on the verge of quitting, uh, it ain't even, your situation ain't even about you, honey. It's about the person that you fit in to save. If you learn just how to endure, how to stay, how to remain, it ain't even, this blessing ain't even just for you. It's for the people you connected to. It's for the people who you're going to save because when we remain with God, his power rests upon us. So, so that, that means the earthquake then, the earthquake then was not for Paul and Silas. If the earthquake came, shook the jail, opened the doors, loosed the shackles, then that means the earthquake was for the jailer to show and exhibit the power of God. Uh, uh, real quick, quick story. Quick story, and I, I got one more point, then I'm done. Um, I, was, I went away for school. Uh, I'm in school, and I went away this year uh, to Colorado, and with my classmates, uh, it's a cohort, there's about seven of us, uh, we just were planning dinner, what we would have for dinner. And so, um, we decided on brisket. Now, I don't eat, I'm not, a, I'm not a brisket eater, and I'm not a chef, but they said we're gonna make it, we're gonna make, we're gonna smoke it. I said, okay, teach me something new. So we went out, we got the brisket, they seasoned the brisket, and then we had a smoker where we were staying, we put it in the smoker, and we left it in the smoker. So after we left it in the smoker, a few hours went past, and I said, uh, hey guys, the brisket is in the, it's in the smoker. They said, yeah, yeah, Josh, we'll get it out. Uh, okay. Uh, now they, they, they set the heat, turned on the smoke, they put the wood chips on it. So two hours went, then another few hours went. I said, hey, y'all know the brisket is still in the smoker. They say, yeah, Josh, we know. We'll get it out. At this point, about six hours had went past. I said, uh, y'all, y'all getting on my nerves. I'm getting a little, where I'm from, uh, you only just leave stuff sitting on the stove for a little, like, oh, you need to go check on it. Okay, they say, okay, John, let's go check on it. So they went and opened the smoker. When they looked at the smoker, when they opened the smoker, they looked at the brisket. The brisket looked like it was done. It looked like it was good. But, and I said, oh, it's time to, see, I told y'all, it's time to take the brisket off. But then um, one of my classmates took a uh, thermometer and they put it on, they stuck it in the brisket. And they looked at the temperature and said, okay, they took it out and then they closed it. I said, wait a minute, man. We need to take that brisket off of the, of the, out of the smoker. He said, no, no, Josh, see, though it looks like it's okay on the outside, it's still cooking on the inside. And it's got to remain in the smoker for an extended period of time because it's not the outside we're worrying about. It's the inside. See, when you learn how to remain in the smoker of life, God is not necessarily working on your outside. He's cooking up some things on the inside. So you need to learn how to endure and remain because God is working on your inside. Next time somebody say, how you doing? Just say, I'm smoking. I'm cooking. I'm, God's working on me. There's something going on on me. Hell is breaking loose in front of me and all around me, but I'm smoking. I'm cooking. It ain't time to get me out yet. It ain't time. If I'm still in it, it ain't time to get me out yet. But one day, soon enough, God's going to take me out of this smoker. And boy, oh boy, when you cut into me, Okay, all right, you gotta remain. You gotta remain, you gotta remain. 
You got to remain. You got to endure. You got to endure. You got to endure. You got to sit with them. You don't quit. Don't quit. Don't leave. Don't leave the church. So many young adults leaving church. You're just hopping from church to church to church to church to church. I'm not, I'm not growing spiritually. Well, maybe that's because you're not pouring. You so full. Since you so full, won't you pour out so that you can keep. That's the, that's the most immature. Huh, I'm not getting poured into. Last time I checked, babies need to eat, be fed. I'm a grown man. That I, got, I got a pastor for covering, for, for assurance, for help, because God gives me instruction to. And his meal is a bonus meal to what I have been eating all week. Can I help you? This is the final thing. Reverence, remain, and the last thing is request. If you give me these last four minutes, I'm going to be done with you. The jailer made a request. Look at this. It says in verse 29, it says, then he called for a light. The jailer, this is the jailer, he ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out of the jail and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, Holy Ghost, help me. Uh, 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 he made a request. Okay, I'm going to drive this home for y'all. Listen to me. Um, so when I was young, um, growing up, my dad, uh, my family, my mom, I would, I would want something. I want new shoes. I would want uh, a game or something like that. And uh, I would go ask my parents. I would typically go to my mom first because my mom was a little bit more easier than my dad. Let the church say amen. So I would go to mom first. And then my mom would mo more likely say, go ask your father. I would say, oh, Lord. Okay. So I would go to my dad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would go to my dad. And I say, Dad, can I have? Can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have these shoes? Can I have this new Sega game or this new game? Or I want to go here. Can I do this? And my dad said, you're, you're making the wrong request. You're, you're asking me the wrong thing. Uh, what you need to be asking me is, what can you do to get? what you want. He said, you need to ask yourself, how can you earn it? What do you need to do if you want that? What do you need to do to get it? And uh, I've never knew this, but my father would just, I say, okay, well, just tell me what I need to do to get it. And my father would have me doing stuff like, he had, my dad has thousands of books. He would say, put my books in alphabetical order. I said, Lord, have mercy. Uh, then he would walk outside and say, look at the concrete, look at the driveway. Uh, it needs to be washed. I said, you wash concrete? He said, today you, did. You, you, today you are. And he would just say, go and spray. Just keep spraying for a couple hours uh, until you just can't spray no more. I don't know, see, but I don't care. But see, I didn't understand then. But what I understand now is that when I want something, Something, I got I to gotta work for it. I got to do something for it. But watch this. Uh, uh, many of you, many of you are not, are in life circumstances and you ain't made the right request. Are you requesting from the wrong people? Married people asking single people for marriage advice. You go on to Instagram to get your, your strategy and your theology of, of God and, and the church and other things. And you need to, you're, you're, you're asking the wrong thing or you're, at, you're not asking the right person. See, my mother knew uh, if, you want, if you want to get something or if you need to get out of something, you need to go to the one who has the power to get, because in our house, the father is the head of the household. And so if you want to get right, with Christ. If you want to get out of a situation in life, you got to request it from who? From God. And this is what Paul and Silas say. Watch this. They say, they answer. So they answered him. He says, what must I do to be saved? And then they answer him. They say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Many of y'all are not requesting. You're not asking. You're not, you're not requesting a, a God to, to, to come into your life to save, to save you. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses, will guard your hearts and minds through who? The answer is not in everybody else. 
the request needs to go through God. Jesus was an example of that. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer to your request. I remember 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave us and he, and he presented and lived this example out through his life. He went and reverenced his father in the garden. He went to the garden. He said, Lord, uh, uh, if you will, let this cup pass from me. But then he said, but not my will be done your will uh, be done. He then was taken and he was beaten and then he was bruised for our iniquities, hung on the cross where he could have got down, but he remained. He remained for me. He remained for you. He remained on that cross. He died on that cross. They took him down off that cross. They put him in a tomb. He remained the first night. He remained the second night. But on the third day, it was time to open the smoker. And when they opened the tomb, when they opened the tomb, he was not there because he had got up with all power in his hands. And that's you today. You need to request that the Lord Jesus come into your life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Somebody shout hallelujah. I feel the spirit in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel God in this place. And right now, somebody needs to make a request for forgiveness. You need to come right now. Make your way to the altar right now. Don't wait for midnight. If you want out of your situation, make your way right now to make a request. What must I do to be saved? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. If that's you coming here, you need to make a request. You're going to everybody else. You're going to so many wrong things, but I come today to tell you the way out of 2023 and every, every suffering or trying situation that you're in is through Jesus Christ. If that's you, I want you to make a choice. Say, Lord, I can't fix this myself and make it your way down here. Come receive Jesus Christ. He died so that you could be forgiven. Come now. Don't wait, don't walk, don't leave. Come now, say, excuse me, that's me. I gotta go down there, not safe. I know it's a lot of people here, but don't worry about them. Say, I gotta get down there. If that's you, if you're in the balcony, you feel the blood warming, running warm in your veins, come meet me right here, right now. Please don't walk during this time unless you're coming to meet me down here. Hurry up, come on. He's called for, he calls for you, he calls for you. Come and request. Reverence God, remain with God, but come and receive him right now. Come on, unsaved, unsure, backslidden. If that's you, come on, come on, come on. Don't you go into 2024 the same situation. Don't you do it, don't you do it, come on. If you backslidden, if you backslidden, you, you were in a posture where you're walking with God and then you turned your back on him and now you find yourself in something that you can't get out of. Come on, come on, that's right. That's right, my brother. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. Come on, come on. He calls for you. Bless you, brother. He calls for you. He calls for you. He calls for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. Y'all, come on. Y'all got to praise God. Y'all should be praying and thanking God for these souls. They're coming. Come on. The way out is Jesus Christ. The way out is Jesus Christ. The way out is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's your faith in him. Now listen, unsaved, unsure, come, keep coming. Uh, backsliding, if you don't know if you're saved or not, come now. 
if you know that you don't have a church home, don't go in 2024 and don't have no church home. If you need a church home, this is a great church to be a part of. You know you were supposed to have been joined a long time ago. You've been coming here for all year long, two years, all 2023. Come be a part of this family. If that's you, come now. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. They're still coming, y'all. Come on. Come on. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Come on, come on. They're still coming, y'all. Let God be glorified. Let God be glorified. May God be glorified. Hallelujah. That's right, that's right, come on. That's right. I'm gonna wait for you, I'll wait for you, but come on. Don't let the devil keep you in your seat. Come meet Jesus right now. He wants to forgive you. He wants to watch you, make you new. Anybody else? All right, real quick, this is what I want you to do. Turn to your neighbor, just turn to the right, to the left, say, is that you and you're scared to go up there? I know this is a big room and it's okay, but if they're scared, say, I'll walk with you. But be serious with them, say, look, seriously. Turn behind you, say, if you're scared, I'll walk you up there. I'll take you up there. I'll take you to Christ. I see you, sister. I see you, bless you. Bless you, sister. Bless you, brother. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Come on, I see you coming. They're still coming, they're still coming. They're still coming, they're still coming. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't leave out of here the wrong way. The way out is through Jesus Christ. I see you come. Come on. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. They still coming, y'all. We got to give God praise. Y'all should be praising God. We should be rejoicing with the angels. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I see you. I see you. Thank y'all for being so patient. Thank y'all for being patient. This is the most important part of this bit, this service. This is the most important. This is the last day of the year. Can we thank God for these people coming? Thank y'all for being patient. Thank you for remaining. Thank you for remaining. Thank you for remaining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you, brother. I see you. I see you coming, brother. I see you. 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 Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. All right, listen. Listen to me. I'm, I'm so proud of all, all of you, even to the very end, every single one of you. I'm proud of you. And listen to me, listen, listen. There is one way, there is one way into eternity in heaven, and that is through the belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And today, I decree, I prophesy to you that you, the way you came in here is going to be different than the way you leave out of here. And God is going to wash and wipe you clean. Amen? The Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you shall be saved. And no matter what your situation is, no matter what you did, he's going to save you. Christ took a punishment. He took the penalty for you. He took the penalty for all of us. And so today, on December 31st, you're going to be made new. The person behind you is an altar counselor. They're going to meet you where they are. They're going to share scripture with you. Amen. They're going to pray with you. And they're going to give you instruction. Listen to their instruction. Amen? Can, can y'all stretch your hands this way? Lord, I thank you for this time. Thank you for these, your sons and daughters. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will wash them, make them new. You know every one of them by name. God, help them to reverence you. Help them to remain with you and to request what they need through your son, Jesus Christ. Make their request that we make it known to you, Lord. Save them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. Okay. You guys gonna go that way? We need five. Okay, wait a minute. We need five more counselors. If you are altar counselor, if you're in a choir, wherever you are, we need five more. If y'all could go out to the to the five women five women we need five women counselors if, if I don't care if you are if you are all the counselors up in the choir please go meet them out uh, here right outside this door at 1305 and and serve please now let's give God glory and praise as they walk out here oh y'all could do better than that can we give God praise